All right, let's see. I got the broadcast going on YouTube. All right, let me check and make sure I have my backup here. How's everything going? I got, ooh, what's today's conference? Okay, so let me abort this one because it looks like it looks like some people are in the wrong conference. Keep up with the days, everybody. Keep up with the days. Okay. Okay, so we are on the right conference. All right. Um, and I want to make sure that before we get into it, that you do know how to participate in this lesson and that you recognize how to go about interacting with me on tonight. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the lesson and how our life application Bible study goes, um, you will recognize that we are doing this telephonically. And you also notice that um, we have a second way to participate also, and that is to do it on um, YouTube. And what we do is, um, one second, use wrong access code, use labs. All right, I'm trying to help out one of our members who is, logged into the wrong place all right so could you guys kind of help everybody out trying to get in um, and make sure they know the correct way to access our um our labs on life application bible study as i was saying you can access us one of two ways the first way you can access us is you can um call in and of course you already have that number and once you get in the access code is labs is uh, 5227 or labs. Um, the other way is that you can um, watch us on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, um, that's wonderful because you can because you can kind of see us. And then if you missed the piece of it or you're watching it and you got interrupted, the great thing about YouTube is you are able to come back later um, and even access the whole entire lesson. So that is fantastic. So um, even if you're listening to us tonight and you're thinking, you know, I want to come back and um, that lesson again, um, you can absolutely do that by going to our YouTube page. Um, there's a couple ways you can find that YouTube page. The first way we recommend is if you want to just grab your cell phone now and text Excel, um, to 40691. Again, Excel to 40691. Then you will be able to um, get our mobile app. And our mobile app is going to show you um, all the different ways that you can connect with us, including on YouTube. Um, another way you can get that we're actually go to YouTube and then actually just Google um, Excel Church Cleveland would have to do Excel Church Cleveland because there is another Excel Church or maybe multiple ones throughout the country and so in order to get to our channel you would want to um, do so um, again if you want to um, call a couple people I'm going to ask that you let them know um, that you you, you, you got to try to find the information before um, we begin it's not really possible for me to messages and tell people how to get on um, while we're in the midst of having the service so um, if you want to give someone a call now and make sure um, that they are able to find it um, that will be awesome because um, we do want to make sure that everyone who wants to be a part of it um, is able to participate and um, you know that's the best way to go about, do about doing that all right all right so let's take a look and see I'm getting down so let me check on the sound real quickly um, let's see everything looks okay on my end I do have sound here mm, no it looks okay in terms of sound. I'm gonna to go to the Facebook page real quickly. Is there anybody here on Facebook that can um, give us some help with, with what's going on? If you wanna text on Facebook, all you do is go to facebook.com forward slash Excel Cleveland. When you get to Excel Cleveland, the, the, like where the post is in the feed, you'll see one that says tonight's labs. When you see the one that says tonight's labs, 
you can just type your comments right there and then I should be able to see them that way. We've tried a couple other ways in terms of like doing a chat and all of that and that didn't work. So this is the way that it's working. If you use that, I will be able to see that. So if someone can just confirm because I'm getting weird messages about um, not being able to hear. So um, everything looks fine. I see the, um, on my end, we have like a, I don't know what, like a sound recorder, quarter board, and it's fluctuating as I'm talking. So, you know, I can tell that everything is going okay on, on my end. Um, so if you're not getting sound, it could just be something that you need to adjust on your side. All right. So I think we've got all those preliminaries out of the way. Um, and again, you know, call your brothers and sisters in the Lord, help them out because they're you know, calling and texting me and I'm in the process of teaching a lesson. So I'm really not in a position to um, answer those calls. So um, help your sisters and brothers out. If you um, know that some people are trying to get on the line and they, they can't remember the access code or um, they don't remember where to go on YouTube, all questions you guys have to ask one another once the lesson is already begun. All right. So grab your Bibles if you could. Um, this is pretty because last week when we met I knew when I announced the subject it was going to cause some trepidation <laughs> uh, for some of the members and um, lo and behold in church the following week I ran into one of the members and they said that when I announced the subject just like I predicted they couldn't take it right at that moment and they had to come back later and um, you know get their mind ready to receive the, the lesson before uh, that lesson went forth and then they call back at a different time um, um, not call back but they signed in at a different time and went ahead and um, reviewed that lesson and how the Lord blessed them and how he really touched them and um, ministered to them and really enlightened them in a lot of different ways and so I'm just excited that you all are at a place where you are mature enough to recognize that the the life application bible study it may not always be an easy word to digest and you make a commitment that you really want to live for god um, of course that's going to involve having a better understanding of what his word is asking of you and so that maturity to kind of just Take a deep breath and say, okay, Lord, go ahead and speak to me on this issue. Go ahead and correct me on this issue. And then doing the hard work that is required in order to apply the word to your life. You know, that's what this walk is all about. That's what's taking up the cross is all about for us. It's not just about us wearing um, jewelry that signifies our faith, but it's about us making daily commitments and dying to our flesh and dying to our old ways um, so that we can live a life that's pleasing to God. And so I'm just really excited to see you guys growing. You know, um, numeric numbers is, is fantastic, um, but I'm especially excited to see you that are with us growing spiritually. And that to me supersedes anything of believers. And so I'm excited. I believe tonight's lesson is going to do the same thing. So that's why I do want to encourage you that if you could just reach out to a few people um, and just make sure they're on the call and they know how to access us on YouTube and how to access us, um, you know, by uh, communicating on Facebook, that would be wonderful. All right. Now, let's grab our Bibles and let's begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for this lesson. We thank you, oh God, for your power. Thank you for sending your, your power, Lord, uh, Father, and enduing us with your power so that we would have the ability to apply your word to every area of our life. Thank you for what you are going to reveal to us tonight. And Father, we're praying right now in the name of Jesus that we would not just be hearers, but doers also of your word. So open our ears, Father God, give us ears to hear, give us an understanding of what you desire to speak to us and allow us to absorb it and apply it in each and every area of our life. These and all blessings we ask in your holy and sacred name. Amen. All right. So tonight's topic, I'm not even going to announce it. I'm just going to start talking about it. I know that if you're listening, you don't know the topic. At least if you are coming on YouTube, you can see the topic. So you're intrigued. Like, what in the world is she getting ready to talk about? It's good. It's really, really good. Don't be deceived. Don't be concerned. It's going to be an amazing lesson because many of the ways where we have to just buckle down and dig deep 
and, and make the adjustments because we know that as we do, breakthrough is on the way. And I can just begin to say to you that, you know, God is doing some amazing things and it doesn't take long for him to move. And so when I'm noticing that there isn't a lot of movement, I began to look to see, okay, am I hindering it? Am I uh, delaying it? Is there something I need to do or something I need to adjust so God can be God and do what he desires to do in my life? And you've got, you're going to love this lesson tonight because if you have an ear to hear, you're going to see some practical things that we can all do um, to really just make sure that God is free to bless us as he desires to do. So let me tell you what inspired this. Many of you looked at my Instagram page. Um, you follow me on Instagram at Pastor A.M. Lytle. And I saw something that was truly, 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 truly funny. Um, and it just really caused me to laugh. I saw it yesterday on another from a church humor account. And so on this particular page, they have um, an illustration, a cartoon, if you will, of um, the Red Sea being parted and Moses leading the Israelites on dry ground through the Red Sea. OK, nothing funny about that. Right. But here's where the humor comes in. That straight up. Right. And there's like this caption where Moses is saying, I told you to stay away from the sides. So the sides being, you know, where the water is. Um, you know, where all the sea creatures still remain. And even though God had, you know, performed this miracle for the Israelites to allow them this heroic escape um, from Pharaoh's army, he, you know, we know closed it back up and it was consuming of those that were pursuing the Israelites. Um, but as they were coming through, it was just, you know, absolutely amazing. Dry ground, the walls of the, the sea just lifted up on each side. So you get this visual, right? You get this visual of, you know, dry ground, you know, a big pathway for the Israelites to come through, Moses leading the way with his staff, and these sea, the walls of the sea lifted up, just like walls. And um, again, the caption, has this guy who is standing with his arm stuck to the wall and a shark with his mouth around his arm and of course it gives you this visual like what is he doing that close to the wall you know you can tell that this wall is just you know held up by the power of God, but yet within the walls of that water, there's still, you know, sharks and sea creatures and, you know, all this other stuff. And so in this particular illustration, the guy is so close to the wall that a shark was able to just bite his arm and he's just stuck against the wall <laughs> with this dumbfounded, foolish look on his face. And then you have this bubble over Moses' head going, I told you not to get that close to the wall or that close to the sides. And so that in and of itself, you know, was just kind of like humorous, like, mm. Don't you know somebody who would just be in that situation? I mean, you could see in the illustration, all the other children of Israel were following Moses. They're all up pack, you know, lined up far away from the walls, you know, just following him as he's leading them through on this dry ground onto the other side, you know, just following the command of God, just following the instructions, just doing and obeying and doing what it is that the Holy Spirit is dictating. But you always have just one, don't you? <laughs> Maybe it's always just one in your family. Maybe there's somebody in your family that just, you're like, yeah, that would be so-and-so stuck to the wall with the shark, you know, getting his arm because he just, not listen, you know, or, you know, maybe there's somebody in your church that it just instantly comes to your mind like, yeah, that would be sister so-and-so just don't never want to listen, you know, or maybe you're thinking of somebody on your job and, or you're in your business and, you know, you're, you're clear that the, that the instructions you've received is going to get everybody through to safety, is going to get everything handled properly, but just one person just got their own little way that they want to do things. And as the illustration dictated, that can lead them into a world of trouble. So tonight's lesson is on foolishness. That's right. You heard me. Foolishness. 
And you're like, Pastor Alicia, what are you talking about? Well, you're going to see because the Bible has actually quite a bit to say about fools. And um, the Bible refers to fools several times. And it cautions people not to live and foolish. I thought, you know what, this is a really important lesson because as comical as that was, it's also painful for the rest of us when we have someone in our midst that is being foolish because not only does it lead them to be placed in harm's way, but oftentimes, as I, as I don't have to tell you, it opens the door for the enemy to come and to harm you in your business or in your home, in your family or in your church um, in any type of congregation or can or community where there is a gathering and there is an in, there is a clear instruction that is to keep that body secure and safe from harm and then there is someone who has not submitted to that and has made a, a lifestyle choice to do as they feel and do as they please that is when you recognize that wait a minute they don't recognize the danger that they're not only themselves in, but the whole entire body to which they believe, whether it's their church, their business, their job, their family. Um, you know, I've even seen it, you know, in, in communities like apartment communities or any type of community that there will be a gathering of believers. So let's take a look at that tonight. It's going to be something that's instrumental. And I want to also keep my eye on the Facebook page. So if you are by chance, um, able to communicate over the course of the lesson, you go ahead and do that by going to facebook.com forward slash Excel Cleveland. And then you just put your comments on um, the link that says tonight's labs. All right. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick check um, just to see if I have everything set up on this end. All righty. And um, I believe you've probably already gotten everybody on the line. I'm looking. All right. Yes. And then I'm going to ask, you know, it's, it was something that was on the wrong um, access code. They had clicked on the access code for prayer instead of the access call for labs. And so um, if someone could call Minister Eric and just, you know, give him a heads up that he was on the wrong access code. Having Bible study, there is nothing wrong um, with our call, but that he does need to call on the right um an access code that would help me to be able to concentrate on what I'm doing. And um, for all of you that are here, I appreciate you. I just, again, want to caution you that um, as talented as I hope to be, um, it's just not possible for me to answer your text messages and respond when I'm in the middle of teaching a lesson. So um, I, I'm greatly appreciating when you guys use other uh, resources like going to our Facebook page to get information or going back through old um, text messages uh, to get information or again um, reaching out to other believers and your brothers in the body of Christ and you know getting information from them in order to um, determine what you need to do but um, actually trying to reach me at the time that I'm teaching is something that I am discouraging um, from taking place so that I can focus on delivering the word of God. Amen. I'm sure you understand that. All right. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 14. Psalms chapter 14. If you're um, there, you can go ahead and say amen, even though I'm not there and even though I can't hear you, um, you know, I still, I, I still want you to uh, participate like we are um, still able to hear one another. So we're at Psalm chapter 14. I'm going to prove it to you tonight. I'm going to build a case because I know um, you're probably wondering what in the world I'm talking about, uh, but you're going to soon see um, that there is absolutely uh, quite a, a rich reference um, to foolishness throughout the word of God and uh, that the Bible is um, a source that is constantly encouraging us to um, avoid living foolishly um, so that we will be safe and be able to inherit the things that God desires to give to us and to do in our life. We're there at Psalms chapter 14. Um, we're going to read verse one. Verse one says, only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil one of them does good all right so 
the scripture here is saying what it's saying that they are corrupt and their actions are evil hmm. because only fools can say in their heart that there is no God you know that's one way we see foolishness when I know you've seen it before you can be somewhere and you know someone is saying you know praise God you know I thank God and someone's discounting um, the presence of God someone's discounting um, the the power of power of god and so you know we have to begin to recognize okay not only is that foolish but that's evil um you know so if you're in an environment where you are testifying about what god has done in your life you are excited you are on fire you, you know how we are when we know our god and we see his handprint we see that he's done something in our life don't you always have somebody in the midst of you talk oh that's just a coincidence <laughs> That ain't that ain't God ain't got nothing to do with that, you know. So they begin to speak foolishly, foolishly is, is what that is. Um, they they're saying that that realm and this foolishness is not only corruptness, but the Bible says that their actions are evil, and so you got to recognize that for what it is. And so I think this will help you because a long time ago, you know, I, again I've said this in different arenas people but I don't have a difficult time cutting out foolishness because I understand the Word of God you know sometimes when you're not strict but you know strict uh, you know and you have standards and there's certain things you allow and certain things you just don't allow um, you know sometimes people will think oh you mean oh you need to loosen up oh you need to but like you're just going out of you know unnecessarily um, harsh but when you recognize what offends God, it offends you. You know, it's just like somebody couldn't sit up in your face and be like, your mama ain't nothing. Your daddy this, your mama that, your daddy. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't tolerate that. You wouldn't let them sit in your presence. If you honor your mother and father, if you love your mother and father, there's no way in the world you would allow them to sit there and be disrespectful and speak ill of your mother and your father. And so it is when it comes to, you know, your God, you got it. You've got to get to a place where you protect your, your hearing from foolishness. So when you begin to recognize that there are certain sources and it doesn't have to be a person, it can be a media outlet. You know, if you every time you turn on a certain media outlet, it's a certain thing. Or every time you turn on a television show, it's a certain thing. Or every time you listen to a certain type of music. I mean, wherever the source of foolishness comes from, don't limit the, the, the lesson. Don't limit the source. Begin to realize that's foolishness. And for me to allow that to be put into my hearing, put into my spirit, put into my environment I'm exposing myself to something that is displeasing to God and so you got to see it for just what it is and you politely excuse yourself you politely you know in that conversation you politely turn the channel you know it, it I'm not saying you got to be mean and nasty but you do have to set standards for yourself so that you do not begin to uh, bring into yourself again the company of intimate fellowship with environments and sources and people that are functioning in a way that is not pleasing to God. And what you find is if that foolishness does not um, concern you, then that means you may, you may still be a little bit deeper in than you recognize you are because it ought to offend you. It ought to bother you. You might be still so far out that you don't recognize that this is something that's offensive to God. It kind of reminds me of cigarette smoke. You know my testimony before I gave my life to Christ. I gave my life to Christ. Um, he just took the taste out of my mouth. I just stopped. That's it. You know, no steps, no pats, no patches. Just you know, the Holy Spirit. Try it if you have it. Okay. And it was so comical because, mind you, I was just you know that last week trying to figure out where I was going to go get pat. But now, because the Holy Spirit had cleansed me and removed that taste from my mouth, now, you know, I would be that one person that would be somewhere coughing, like, <coughs> you know, like I can't breathe now. You know, I was just inhaling 12 packs last week. <laughs> but my point being, when you a decision that you want to live for Christ, then you really make a decision that you want to live holy. You want to um, 
not only just hear the word, but you want to do the word. Foolishness ought to be just as aggravating to you as cigarette smoke is to a non-smoker. It ought to choke you. It ought to, it ought to make you uncomfortable. It ought to make you leave out the room like, I, mm -mm, no, no. And if that doesn't happen yet, may I submit to you that you're still a little bit entangled in that yourself. So we're going we're gonna to deal with that tonight, and that's okay, um, because we're, we're going to get you free too, if that's you. All right? Let's turn also, I want you to see something else to Psalm, at Psalm um, 53. And still talk to me on Facebook. I want to see what you got on Facebook. All right, so let's go to Psalm 53, and we're going to look at verse 1. Psalm 53, we're going to look at verse 1. And then um, you're going to see it says what we already saw, but I just want you to see it. It says, only fools say in their heart there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them is good. Now, you know, we just read that, right? So that's important. When you're seeing something in the word of God in duplication like that, you do need to take note. Turn with me to Psalm 107 real quick. 107. This is good because I know when I said the subject, you thought, now, how is she going to teach that? Well, it's in the word. So let's to it. Psalm 107. Let's look at verse 17. Some were fools. They rebelled and suffered for their sins. Whoa, 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 whoa. Some were fools. They rebelled and suffered for their sins. All right. I want to see who's with me. I want to get you on the line. Um, I want to unmute some people because I want to just, I'm just curious. I want you to go don't take a long time. Don't try to preach a sermon. How does a person become a fool? How does a person become a fool? All right. So if you are on YouTube and you want to answer that, type something on this Facebook page real quick. All right. Let me see what you're saying. How, how does a person become a fool? I'm going to type how, just so you guys can make sure you know where to put it. All right, y'all see it? How, how, you, you need to go to Excel, facebook.com forward slash Excel Cleveland. That's where I'm going to see your comments, facebook.com forward slash X is E X C E L Cleveland. All right. Don't, don't all, don't all come at once. All right. Let me see what you're saying. I don't see you guys saying anything yet. Are you guys driving or are you guys at a place where like you, you're using your do both. I want to see how, so you see where it's at, where it has the comment that says tonight's last. And then right up under there, I have the word how. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go, let me try a little smaller for a second. I'm going to take a peek and see what some of the call, some of the callers say. All right, callers, I'm going to uh, unmute you. Y'all ready for this? Okay, I'm going to unmute Minister Eric. All right, Minister Eric, you're unmuted. How are you tonight? Can you hear me? Minister Eric, can you hear me? I think I unmuted you. If I sing your line too, maybe you have your phone muted. All right, I'm going to come back to you because I don't hear you. I want to make sure this is working. All right, I'm going to unmute Sister Lavetta. Sister Lavetta, I am unmuting you. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, Sister Lavetta, is it okay? Can you talk for a second? Okay, let's just take a stab at it. I want to hear from my callers. I want to hear from the people who are on the line because I'm checking on Facebook and nobody is saying anything to me on Facebook. So I'm going to check my callers on the line. In your opinion, how does a person become a fool according to what you read just now in, one, in Psalm 107, verse 17? Let me read it again just in case you were 
multitasking and um, so we can have a fresh frame of reference. They rebelled and suffered for their sins. So how does a person become a fool? How? What's right before it? All right, all right, all right. Now that's good. <laughs> that's good, uh, Sister Lavetta. She said, "I know you were looking for a right answer, and you know there, there, there is a a, a scripturally correct answer, but there's also just common sense. And I do believe that you really are functioning in common sense in the answer that you gave, because what you what you said is, you know, if somebody's not learning from their suffering, if someone's not learning from their mistakes." If, if, if there is something that is taking place and they're not evaluating to find out, whoa, 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 why is this repeatedly happening to me? Why am I seeing this outcome? Why am I suffering in this way? And they're not willing to recognize that their own rebellion is at cause. The scripture is saying something here about that person. That person is being foolish. That person is not. Um, taking note of the caution that is available to us in the Bible. It's almost like, and you know, it's, it's just really quite simple. The Bible is a manual that is designed to help us get victory in our life. And it's really foolish of us to say, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to figure this out on my own. You know, I, I got this. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I don't need your help. I mean, that's essentially what you're saying. You're saying, don't worry about it. I got this. I know you created heaven and earth, and I mean, I know you're Alpha and Omega. I mean, I I I know you're the beginning and the end, but I I I'm gonna do this my way. All right. So when we say that, even if we haven't verbally said, say that in our conduct, and if we say that in our actions, then what we're saying is we're foolish. We're foolish because we have recognized that God has already shown us the way. He's already sent the way, the truth, the light. He has already made it plain for us. All we have to do is follow the manual, follow the follow the book, the book, the Bible, the word of God. Everything we need is there. And so it's just foolish, bottom line, to rebel against our heavenly father and say, no, I got a way that I'm going to do this. And it's going to be better than what you came up with, right? I mean, when you put it that way, it, that sounds foolish, correct? Okay, so we, we want to avoid that because the Bible is saying here in Psalms 107, verse 17, that a foolish person is going to suffer many consequences. So that's what I'm saying tonight is why I wanted to go ahead and deal with this. Well, I wanted to go ahead and explore this topic, even though I know it's going to offend some people. You know, that's okay. It won't be the last time. I want those of you who won't take offense, but will say, you know what? I never thought about it that way, Pastor Alicia. I didn't realize that I was being foolish. I didn't realize that I was disregarding the one uh, recipe, the one formula, the one set of principles that I could utilize to access the breakthrough that I need. Because I do absolutely need a breakthrough. I need a healing in my body. I, I'm absolutely standing in faith for financial freedom. And so now that you put it that way, I, yeah, I, I do need to hear this lesson. Amen. I mean, I know there's somebody tonight who is able to go ahead and say, yeah, I'm going to tell the truth and shame the devil. I need to go ahead and make sure that in my dealings to, to avoid this suffering, to avoid the harm, to avoid the pain and the backlash that I'm not foolish and that I'm, I'm listening to what it is that God wants me to do. All right. Now turn to me with me real quick. Go to Proverbs chapter Go to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10 has something to say as well. Look at verse 8. It says, the wise are glad 
to be instructed. Let's just, let me repeat that. The wise are glad to be, but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. Look at verse 10 too. People who wink at wrong cause trouble, but a bold reproof promotes peace. Bold reproof. You see what I'm saying? Bold. Uh-uh, no, you're not going to do that in my house. Take that out of here. Bold reproof. Bold. Do you understand? Reproof. Verse 21. Skip over there with me. Verse 21. The words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed from their lack of common sense. Whew. Let me let me do that one again. Hold on, because I'm trying to see. I'm trying to look. I'm I'm really trying to multitask. I see I got some comments coming. I see I see I got some comments coming. So I want to make sure I'm not ignoring everybody. But I do want to read verse 21 again. The words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed by lack of common sense. All right, one more verse, one more verse. Let's go to 23. This is good. Doing wrong is fun for a fool, but living wisely brings pleasure to the sensible. Mm. Ooh, I'm ready to break that down. Y'all ready to break that down with me? Y'all need to go to Facebook, though. I see you liked something. Thank you, Sister Kiana. Somebody went to Facebook. Somebody followed instructions. Thank you, Sister Kiana, for going to Facebook.com forward slash Excel Cleveland <laughs> and typing so that I would be able to hear. Now, here's the only thing. I need you guys to really apply this. So I need you guys to work this through with me because I know if you're anything like me, that word, it just feels bad. You know, fool, you know, you call somebody a fool, you know, that's like fighting words. You, you know, you say somebody's foolish, you know, that's like, what you mean? I'm foolish. Um, but it's an action. It's, it's a action. It's not your intellect. It's not your IQ. It's not how many degrees you have. You know, you can have 12 degrees and be foolish, you know, um, it's about what we're saying tonight. It's about disregarding the ultimate plan. It's about disregarding and making a conscientious decision to go a different route laid out for us, which is the one that he has told us is the way, the way that provides safety, the way that provides peace, the way that provides joy. And it is, as the scripture is saying here, for a fool, you know, doing wrong is fun. You know, it's, hey, I'm, I'm having fun. You know, I, I might not be following the word. I might not be living holy. I might not be living right, but I'm having fun. You know, so that that supersedes all else. I'm having a good time. It felt good while I was doing it. It was good while it lasted. That's foolish, the scripture is saying. You're not counting the consequences of that sin. You're not counting what that's going to cost you down the line. You're not adding up the cost of those decisions, and you are allowing foolish decisions to take you on a path that is going to give you consequences down the line that you know you desire to experience. So the Bible is teaching us that the one that is wise is the one that's willing to take the correction. The one that is wise is the one that's willing to say, no, you tell me what I was doing wrong. I, I want to do it right. I want to fix it. You know, I, you, you got to get it. I, I love like one of the things that my kids' school does is, you know, when they take their homework and they bring it home and if they get it wrong, you know, they'll give them a grade or whatever. But me and my husband, you know, we're, we're key for being like, do it over again. And my kids will be like, why? For what? We already got the great because fools are don't want to know what they did wrong. Fools are the ones that say, okay, I got a whatever grade, you know, whatever. But if you are wise, then 
you want to know, no, show me where I went wrong. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to make that mistake again. Show me mommy. What, what, where was it in this problem? When I was doing the problem, I thought when I brought the one down and I carried it, it was wrong. Show me what I did wrong. So tomorrow when I go back, I don't have to face it again. You see what I'm saying? That's wisdom. So when we begin to operate in wisdom, we begin to say, no, Lord, show me. I'm not ducking and dodging. I don't want to, don't want to hear the word. Don't want nobody to preach to me. You know, don't tell me I'm wrong. You, who you talking? You ain't better than me. You can't tell me nothing. Okay. All right. That's foolish though just so you know. But when you start to operate in wisdom, you want to know. No. According to the word of God, please instruct me. Now, don't, don't instruct me out of your flesh. <laughs> don't give me some you come up with. But I, according to the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit that moves through you, begin. show me, please. Help me, please. Help me to see what it was that I did an error so that the next time when I do it, I can do it right. Because I believe that in the word of God and I believe if I do it right, I believe if I do it decently and in order, I believe if I do it according to the way of God, that God's going to bless me. So I have a vested interest in doing it right because I know that my blessings are going to flow through that. I know my breakthrough is going to come through that. So I, I would like to know what would be right. But that's wisdom. Amen. So we've got to get to that place, you know, and, and again, you just got to recognize everybody ain't at that place. OK, so, you know, don't get all frustrated. You know, don't don't get all upset. You know, when you know, you know how it is. You got kids, you know, that, you, know you, you got family members, you got business partners, you got staff. I mean, you got people just in your midst that, you know, you love them to death. And you just really absolutely want what's best for them. But they just decided they want to be foolish. That's okay. You've got to allow people to make those errors. And sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes it is suffering the consequences of that foolishness that will awake a person and say, you know what? Now, now that I didn't like the way that felt. That 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 whooping right there that that the Lord gave me that one I did not like. So that may be the one thing that was them. And then you just be ready when they come back, when they turn themselves back around and be like that right there. I don't want to go through that again. What, what do I need to do? Then you're ready to teach. Then you're ready to instruct. But see, here's the thing. You cannot force that instruction upon someone who is in foolish mode. I want wisdom. The scripture just said they, they reject wisdom. They reject the way of God. If they don't want to listen to God, they surely ain't going to listen to you. Who are you? So at some point, we come to recognize, you know, I'm good for that. And Pastor and I both are very good for that. You know, sometimes people misunderstand it. Oh, it's not that I don't love, I don't care. I just know that you're not being teachable right now. I know you don't want to hear wisdom right now. So, you know, when you're done, when you're ready to hear, I'll still be here. I'll still be teaching the word. I'll still be living for God. I'll still be willing to show you the way. I don't care, you know, how long it took you, what all you did in the process. When you're get, when you're ready, I'm, I'm still here. But ultimately, when you are trying to help your son, your daughter, your family member, your church member, your staff member, your business partner, whoever, you you've got to recognize that they have to be in a position and in a frame of mind to desire wisdom. See, that's why Solomon was so powerful. He was in a position where he could have asked for anything at all. But what did he ask for? He asked for wisdom. Woo! I'm telling you, wisdom is a power of money, but what you need is wisdom. If you get wisdom, if you stop acting foolish and actually start seeking the wisdom of God and begin to seek the voice of God and not just surround yourself with people that tell you what you want to hear, people that agree with what you want to do. Because here's the thing, when your flesh is desiring to do wrong, it will latch on and soak it up like a sponge when there are other people around you that support unrighteousness. But your flesh is not going to like it too much when you have people around you that are speaking that's why sometimes it's so hard for people to stay connected in the body of Christ. That's why sometimes it's so challenging for people to stay planted and to put their roots 
in to the house of God because you know as long as it's not creating an irritation or a conflict with the desire then it's okay but when the sinful desires start to rise up and then the power of God begins to come against it, there's two choices. You either can submit and say, no sinful nature. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We're going to submit this flesh. We're going to crucify it right now on the cross and we're going to live for Christ. We're going to obey God and submit to those he placed in authority over us. And we're going to live and walk in wisdom so we can receive an abundance in our life. That, that's wisdom. Or you could break root. You could, you know, break up roots and be like, you know, I ain't taking that. You know, they they told me I can't do this and I can't do that. And you know, and I don't nobody tell me what to do. Okay, that's fine, but that's foolishness because that's going against what the prescription is that God has given to us. It's just like a prescription that you may receive, and you know that this is it's life threatening. And if you do not take this prescription, that you shall die. But, you know, I don't want to take that. You know, the side effects, you know, I'd be dizzy when I take that. Okay, do you want to be dizzy or dead? Really? That's foolish. Well, I don't know. I don't want to take that because that makes me gain weight. Okay, do you want to be 10 pounds overweight or dead? Which one is it? You have to make that choice. And so we are saying tonight, Excel Church, we choose wisdom. We choose life. We choose death. We don't choose foolishness. Foolishness is death. Foolishness is suffering. Foolishness is walking around in the promised land for 40 years when the journey is really an 18 day journey. That's foolishness. I don't have time for that. I'm not walking around on 40 years for something that I could have done with in 18 days. But when you operate in foolishness, that's exactly what's going on. It's taking you 20 years to do something that you could have been done with in two days. It's taking you two months to complete something that you would have been done with in two hours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Woo I know y'all ain't like this, but that's okay. It's the truth anyhow. And I'm going to preach the truth because I'm trying to do my assignment in excellence to the glory of God. And people pleasing is not my assignment. Amen. All right. So let's move on. Let's move on because I do know we have um, at least one more scripture I want us to read before we close. If you're still there. <laughs> I love y'all. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 12. We're going to read verse 15 and a couple other ones. And we're going to pray. We're going to close. All right. Proverbs chapter 12. We're going to read verse 15 and 16 first. Are you there with me? Because I know you got your Bibles ready, right? You still, you still, it's still Bible study. I know we on the computer and all that, but we, we still have Bible study. All right. Proverbs chapter 12. All right, I'm going to read verse 15 and 16 first, and then we're going to skip, skip over, and we're going to read a couple other ones, and then we're going to go ahead and close. All right, it says, fools think their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. That's why I'm telling you, that little cartoon just cracked me up, because I, I just, when I saw it, I just... I just saw so many people. It was just, just, it was just comical to me. And it was just sad at the same time because it was like, now look at this. They're about to lose their arm, if not their whole life, because this person is about to get consumed because of the disobedience and not following the instructions that were clear. We know the instructions were clear in the illustration. It was like 10,000 other people in the right place, but you out of place, you out of position, you're supposed to be doing. But the thing that I thought was really hum humorous was in the caption, you know, the author said, the sad thing about the position the man was in is I know somebody, one of his sisters, one of his brothers was like, hey, um, Moses said we ain't supposed to go that close. We, he's, you know, we ain't supposed to do that. I know somebody warned them. I know somebody was like, um, I don't think you should be sleeping with him that ain't that ain't that ain't your husband is it i i know somebody didn't told you i know somebody didn't gave you some type of wisdom i know somebody didn't say hey i don't think you should quit that job you know because you don't don't you don't you got a family to support i mean don't you want to line up another job first before you get mad and quit i know you got some wisdom from somewhere but here's what happens the bible says fools think their own way is right because they're foolish so it which doesn't register. They think, no, what I'm going to do is right. I got 
a family that's supporting that I got to support, but I'm going to quit right now because I'm, you know, I'm aggravated and I'm upset. So that's my flesh wants to do that. And that's what we're going to do. I, I, I know that we're not married yet, but I, I would like to be, you know, intimate with you. So, hey, let's do it. You're, you, when you begin to function in that realm where you know that there's a wrong and there's a right, but you just routinely, I'm not talking about, you know, I slipped up. I was really doing good. I was trying, you know, Lord, I was, you know, Lord knows, you know, I was you know, on the, I was on the, in the narrow. I was living for you. I was just, and I just, ugh, mm, Lord, forgive me. You know, no, 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 no. I'm talking about, this is what you, 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 you have made a lifestyle out of doing what you desire to do. Your way is right. Don't worry about what God said. You know, he, he, you know, that, that was just an advisory opinion. But what I would like to do is what I'm going to do. See, the Bible says the fool thinks their way is right, but the wise listens to others. That little man in that cartoon, I'm sure he was just like, you don't tell me what to do. You ain't no better than me. You, you, don't, you don't give me no instructions. <laughs> you, don't, you can't judge me. <laughs> and now his hand is stuck in the shark's mouth and he's on his way to consume, wishing, man, maybe I should listen when they said that you ain't supposed to get that close to the, to the wall. Here's what I'm saying tonight, Excel Church. Everybody ain't against you. If you got somebody telling you, hey, boo, you need to stop doing that. Hey, you know, you God is not pleased with this. You, you know, I, I much. I, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to just, you know, I want you to just, I want to see you do better. I know you got better. I know there's better in you. I know there's better for you. I, I just want to see you excel. <laughs> That's it. I mean, I'm not trying to. Mm, I want to see you excel. I want to see you do well. Man, I see potential in you. Man, you are anointed. Man, you are beautiful. Man, you are you are strong. You are powerful. You are mighty. You, man, you are a child of God. My God. Woo, I see awesomeness in you. you you're going to be a mighty woman of God. You're going to be an amazing man of God. You got a powerful ministry inside of you. you you're going to help nations, not, not cities, nations. You're going to send you. I just one, I, I just know that X, Y, and Z is holding you up. When you gonna stop? That's wisdom. The fool don't want to hear that. The fool, I, well, I, you know, well, I, yeah. See, when I was smoking cigarettes, I knew better. I knew better. Here's the thing about it that was comical. I was one of those kids that when I was little and my mom and dad smoked, you know, I would cry. I'd be like, mommy, don't smoke because they said you're going to kill you. You're going to die. Lung cancer. You know, I, I, all of that. Well, let me tell you what happened. I was in college. I was at some kind of little party or whatever. And like, but, you know, everybody was doing it. You know, college people are broke. They didn't have any money. So, you know, they get these kegs of beer or whatever. And it was like, I wanted to feel this buzz. Y'all know what a buzz is. And they were like, here, you know, take a puff of the cigarette. It's going to make your buzz, you know, feel good. And had, I'll never forget, I had like this feeling, you know, like that feeling you get, like if you spin around like your little kids do. <laughs> now I come to think of it, that's why they do that. You know how little kids just start spinning in circles and then they stop. And it's like, they, you know, they feel like the world is just like spinning around. And they're like, woo, that was fun. And then they do it again. Well, that's what I wanted to experience. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this cigarette hit the cigarette and it's gonna give me this buzz and when i get this buzz i'm gonna be like whoa i, I like this feeling but let me tell you what happened saints i can get that buzz the next time and then the next time but but now i'm just addicted i don't even have the thrill anymore it don't even give me the buzz the first time because i hadn't done it before it gave me a gave me a buzz it felt like you know good but then that's how sin is. It's like it feels good that first time. But then after it got you in its grip, it don't even feel good anymore. You don't even enjoy doing it anymore. You just can't get loose. <laughs> and I just had got to a place where I just, you know, now I'm just routinely getting up and turn to a carton. And a carton turn to several cartons. And I'm looking at myself while I'm standing outside and I can see it like it's yesterday. It's freezing. I live in Cleveland. Some of y'all ain't in Cleveland because this is a national ministry, but I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, where the, the, the winters are freezing in the cold, in college, outside the building, like a fiend with my little cigarette, trying to get this hit because now I got to have it. It went from, I wanted to have it 
I enjoyed it. So now I got to have it. And once I really realized, I said, you know what? This is foolishness. I'm taking money. I'm destroying my lungs. I'm standing out in the cold. I'm, this is foolish. But guess what? The grip of sin and the power of the enemy had allowed me to just begin to just make wrong right. Next thing you know, I'm telling people, look, you got to die anyway. You know, I'm going to die some kind of way, you know, hey. <laughs> I got to justifying my wrong. Now, now I'm happy to die. Now I'm happy to, to die of lung cancer. Because sometimes when we get so far in our sin and we really don't want to get free, we reject wisdom. We reject instruction we reject logic and we begin to just start justifying and rationalizing why what wrong is right and sin is okay and you know what i'm doing is all right and come on now and finally reached the point where as i said i didn't have the power to get free i didn't have the power to stop and if i hadn't have been born again baptized in the holy spirit and filled with the power of the holy ghost i'd probably still be spoken right now but i tell you this when i rededicated my life to christ i got down on my knees i prayed and i asked god to begin to re to just renew in me a right spirit to cleanse me to make me new i was serious about that born again I came back up and i was born uh Again, I was a new creature. I said, look, with me and that old person, we don't even know each other anymore. God said, I'm going to separate you, cast you as far as the, your, your sins, as far as the east is from the west. I'm throwing that into the sea of forgetfulness. You are a new creature. You remember her. What well, she did, we don't do that anymore. We don't, we don't live like that no more. We don't flow like that no more. We don't roll like that. We, we, we don't do none of that no more. You are a new creature. And I'm telling you, God gave me the power. I have not, and I don't know, what was that? Uh, I can't even keep track. Maybe 25 years ago, I've not even smoked a cigarette. But mind you, I was in bondage. I couldn't get loose. I mean, I, I mean, all day, all night. I mean, we get up in the middle of the night and go get me a pack if I had to. What am I saying? I'm saying, I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're going through. I'm not sitting here in a seat of judgment. I'm sitting here in a seat of encouragement to bring you the wisdom that you absolutely can do all things through Christ, who is your strength. If you desire to get free, if you desire to live holy, if you desire to walk in wisdom, if you desire to escape foolishness and nonsense and sin and unrighteousness and ratchetness, God will deliver you. But you got to want it. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we want it. Father, we want it. We desire it. We need you, Lord. We need you like we've never needed you before. We know that all power is in your hand. Father, we know that you can do all things but fail. We thank you right now, Father God, for opening our eyes. Father, we feel like Saul. We feel like in a Damascus encounter has taken place. We feel like, God, you have just removed the scales from our eyes. Scales are dropping from our eyes right now in the name of Jesus. We're seeing sin for right what it is, Father. We're seeing foolishness right for what it is. And Father, we do not desire to be called foolish. We do not desire to actually be fools. Oh, we rebuke the spirit of foolishness because that is beneath us, oh God. We are powerful. We are mighty. We are anointed. We are called and chosen of you. We are wise and we shall walk in wisdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, begin to smooch. Jesus, begin to just move through the atmosphere, through the telephone, through the television, through the iPad, the telephone, every a device that is dispersing your word and this prayer right now, Father God. We loose them 
In the name of Jesus, Satan, take your hands, anointed ones. Ah, yes, Satan, take your hands. Your grip is broken. I cast you into the sea. I deny you power over the anointed chosen vessels of God. They shall be free to serve God to walk in righteousness. They shall be free to walk in wisdom and to make choices that are pleasing unto God. They shall receive their inheritance. They shall walk blessed. They shall walk highly favored and they shall walk in the presence of God. We declare it and decree it right now, Father God, not by my power, but by your power, by the power of Jesus Christ, we dispatch your heavenly angels to be in camp round about each and every person on this call, oh God. Begin to arrest them with your spirit. Bring them to their knees, oh God, that they will begin to just cry out to you, oh God. Pour out every unclean spirit in Jesus. Pour out rebelliousness. Hadabashokurosika foolishness in the name of Jesus. Come out. I demand it. You must flee and never return. This earthly vessel, this body is called to serve Christ. This woman, this man shall walk and receive their earthly inheritance. Oh, ba, 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 so, so they can give God the praise. Mm, yes, God. Oh, yes, Lord. It's all right to just go ahead and praise him. God is doing something right now, saints. God is doing something in your house. He's doing something in your car. The spirit of God is heavy right now. And I know our time has come to a close, but I declare you shall continue to give God praise. Even though our call may end, even though this lesson may close, you keep on praising him. You keep on giving him the honor. You keep on giving him the glory. You keep on praying. You keep on asking for forgiveness. You keep on saying, God, I repent. I need you in my life. You go ahead and just begin to speak in your heavenly language. Go ahead. They may not even and they may think you have lost your mind like they did the disciples. They may think you are drunken with wine, but you know, oh God, that the spirit of God is just resting upon you. Don't resist it. Go ahead and give into it right now. Hmm, thank you, Jesus. Huh? We give you praise and honor and glory for this lesson. We thank you for your work that you've begun tonight. And we thank you, Father God, that the Holy Spirit is faithful to complete it even until the end of time. So we give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory for tonight's lesson. We count it as already done. I'm Pastor Alicia and on behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Charles and all the amazing members of Excel Church, we're praying for you and we're waiting to see you excel. Good night.